What's up, everybody? Jason's here. Welcome back. We will continue with where we have left off in the last video. We've got our PBX system well prepared. Starting from this video, we're going to set our PBX step by step and eventually make sure it functions as the central server of our telephone system. So today we're going to introduce adding and modifying extensions, including some interesting extension features. You will also see how to efficiently add hundreds of extensions with a simple process without suffering from repeatedly tedious copy and paste. All right, enough talk. Let's just get started with our second lesson. Extension settings. Extensions are accounts created in the PBX for every user of the telephone system. In many cases, the administrator of the telephone system will assign one extension to one specific user, who most likely will be the employee of the company. As long as you own the phone, either hardware or software based, bind with an internal number. It means you are one extension to your PBX system. So, an extension is actually the terminal of your telephone system. To create an extension, you have to go to the PBX category, click on Extensions. You will see a list of all existing extensions in your system. Click on Add. A window pop out with all parameters generated already. You can simply keep it this way and click on Save. Now, let's hold on a second and have a quick look on these parameters. The extension number is the number for this specific account. You can understand it as the internal number for the user which others can call. You can change it, of course, but please note it has to fall into the extension range. If you're not clear about the range, you can go to the general setting in the same category. Scrolling down a little bit, find the extension preferences. All numbers range are shown here. The range is changeable from 2 to 7 digits number. Just make sure the numbers won't overlap with each other. Getting back to the Add Extension page, as you can see, we could actually choose whatever types of extension we want, either a SIP, IAX, or Analog. SIP and IAX are for VoIP-based terminals like the IP phones and soft phones. These two different protocols are both very common in this industry. IAX is relatively more bandwidth efficient, while SIP is more extensible and popular. And there are a lot of articles over the internet that provide very profound explanations if you are interested in this topic. Anyway, both IAX and SIP are usually supported at the same time in one equipment. You can check with your phone provider to re-insure though. Here we support adding multiple terminals for one extension because a lot of people might have more than one equipment that needed to be connected with the PBX, like IP phone, mobile phone, and soft phone on the computer. For instance, we can configure concurrent registration here and put in the quantity of the equipment we need for the same extension. We can maximum set 5 SIP with an additional IAX and an analog equipment. Once it has been set, all these equipment will share with one same extension number along with other parameters and will have equal access to calls sent to this specific extension. Now, let's move on other parameters. Registration name and password are for phones to provision with the extension. So we suggest you use a random and complicated registration password to secure your system. Card ID is the ID shown for colleagues while making internal calls within your PBX system. The name and user information can be configured as you wish. It is designed to identify who is actually using this equipment so that the administrator can simply check and locate specific extension easily in the web GUI. We suggest you put in the name of this extension user. Here we have user password, which is used for the extension user to log into the web GUI system, checking their extension configurations and voicemails, as well as other operation that is allowed by the administrator. You can also assign an email and mobile number to this extension. The email will receive all information and alert sent by the system. For example, like voicemail received by the extension. The mobile phone can use it to receive notifications either. What's more, remoting extension can be available as well. We will talk about it later. 
Here we can also set our system prompts specifically for this extension, which means this user could have a choice of system prompt by himself. That's the multi-language system prompt we've mentioned in the last video. Let's go get the features page. Here you can set various extension features, including voicemail, call forward, mobility extension, monitor, D&D, and other features. Firstly, enable and disable voicemail for the extension. You can also set a pin code for voicemail. Then, the system will require the user to put in the correct pin code while accessing to voicemail received by the extension. We can also activate voicemail to email here. Once activated, the system will send the voicemail to the mailbox assigned to this extension, as shown a few minutes earlier in the video. We could also have a call forward setting as well. This feature allows you to forward received calls to other destination under a specific condition, like always, when busy, and when not answered. We offer various options including to voicemail, to other extensions, and to cell phones, which will be the mobile number we have assigned in the basic page. You can also forward calls to other outside numbers by choosing custom number, or enable mobility extensions for this user. If enabled, the mobile number bind to this extension will be functioning as mobility extension, which will be able to dial into the system by using trunks connected to the PBX and call other extensions. Checking voicemail with equal authorization has the desktop extension. Of course, a prefix must be set if you want to use this to make outbound calls through the PBX. We will be on it in our future videos. Last but not the least, we have monitor settings. Here you can set if you want to make this extension being monitored by other extensions, as well as configure this extension as a supervisor so they can act a real-time monitor on the loud extensions calls. We have three monitor modes. Listen mode means that supervisor can only hear but not allowed to speak. Well, in whisper mode, the supervisor can't only hear but also talk to the monitor the extension. The other part of this call won't hear anything. Then, in barging mode, when the supervisor speaks, both of the caller and callee will hear it. Once you finish with your extension settings, you can click on save and apply so that you can successfully create this extension and all your configuration will take effect. We've gone through all these might need to know while creating an extension. The problem is you may need set hundreds of extensions for one system. Repeating that same configuration can be very tiring. Just click Add Bulk and set numbers of extensions at the same time. As you can see here, all configurations and features we have mentioned have been included. This means all extensions created here have to be the same configurations. Well, you might think it's still not convenient enough. We do agree with that. So, we offer you a third option, where you can put everything in a template and directly import this template to the PBX. And then, everything will be set accordingly. Here we have an example. You can change anything you like in this CSV form, which can be opened and edited with Microsoft Excel. Once you finish this template, you can just click on Import, and then find this file and have it imported. This means you can have your own standard template made and use it whenever setting new system with only minor changes. Now, we have all extensions configured, but we still need to register phones, whatever IP phone or soft phones, to those extensions so that we can make an actual phone call. We can surely go to the web GUI of our IP phone and put everything manually, but it's kind of like wasting time. So auto-provisioning here is absolutely necessary, though it's not part of core functions of Asterisk PBX. Apparently, step 1 will be connect with our phones physically to the local network. If you're not sure about how to do that, you can go to this link. We have a detailed manual with everything you need to know. And then, go to the main menu and find out the auto-provisioning. 
After that, just click on Add and check Equipment List. Here the PBX has it detected with its IP address and MAC address, where we can identify each phone with this information. The MAC address will be found in the label on the backside of IP phones. We can also find IP address directly from the IP phone. Now, we will need to select the IP phones we want to configure. Once it has been done, click on Add it. It's very important to make sure that the phones we've selected of the same model. Because the auto-provisioning is realized by the phones through downloading and filling configuration file automatically. And different models use different files. To proceed, all we need to do is to click on Add and choose the MAC address of the phone and choose an extension. Click on Add to bind with them. Then continue with the rest until the finish with all phones selected. Click on Save. Phones will reboot automatically. The auto provisioning will be down. Now we can make internal calls between extensions. That was all for this video, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like our video. And for more A-Star updates, just follow us on Twitter and Facebook. You won't miss it. Here's the link I would like to share with you guys to get more information on A-Star Academy. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. See you guys in the next video episode.